How's it going guys? In this video I'm going to show you how to do some dynamic routing in Symfony where we don't rewrite the URL and then also another example where we are going to rewrite the URL. So what I have here is I'm in my appdev.php slash store and when they go to slash store right here um, the default category we're going to show them is books and then the default product is JavaScript book. Now this function right here can take um, two different parameters. So um, for example, if they go slash store in, you know, instead of uh, books, they go to pets, um, then we're going to show them the pets category and show them the default pets product because they didn't pass in a second argument. But if they did pass in a second argument, such as cat, then we're showing them the pets category and then also the cat product. Um, so that's basically how that works and it just provides um, a default value if they didn't pass in two of the arguments and then also a default value if they only passed in one of the arguments. Now the other example I have here is in slash shop and if they go to slash shop right here um, we do the same thing we did in the last time but we're rewriting the URL here and rewriting the URL um, could be useful if we want the user to be able to bookmark the page so like in the last one um, we can show them books or JavaScript book or or wherever but um, it's not uh, it's not you know populating the URL up here so they're not going to be able to bookmark um, this section but in this next one I use JavaScript to rewrite the URL so um, you know we redirect them there and then they can bookmark this page so um, with this one it's the same thing like after shop if they put pets um, then they get pets in the default pets product and then after pets if they put cat then they see the cat product so um, let's just go over to the code and I'll show you how I did this so I'm using um, annotation for the routing in this example and what I have here is a route that can take two arguments. Well, it must take two arguments. And after store, we have category slash product. And we also provide this some, some default values in the routing. So we have our defaults array right here. And then we have category is set to books, and then a comma, and then product is set to JavaScript book. And make sure that these are both in quotation marks too. And so if we go down here to the um, index action, this one is the um, this one is the slash store example. So if they didn't provide this category or product, well, then this category or product is still going to be passed into this function, but it's going to come from these default values right up here. And one thing that I need to do here was I need to put in an if statement because the problem was, was that if they put um, pets for the category here, but they didn't put a product, what was happening was we were getting slash store slash pets and then slash JavaScript book so what I need to do was need to do a check so um, if they passed in the category so the category wasn't equal to books and the product was equal to JavaScript so this would always return true when they put in a category like pets but they didn't provide a second argument so if the category was not equal to books and the product was equal to JavaScript book then what we did was product was set to the default category product right here and then we just return the array um, category is set to category and product is set to product and that gets passed to our twig view so let's just take a look at our twig view for this index uh, function and nothing special here um, the category we're showing you is and then we have um, you know twig syntax here for outputting the um, variable that was passed to it and then category here and then product here so that's basically how that um, index one works so if you want some to provide some default values there and um, you know show different products or you know whatever you want to show but you don't want the URL to change then you know you could use something like this right here um, the next one that I want to do was another example where we actually do rewrite the URL and at first, um, I was at first what I did was uh, this little guy right here. So header was set to location, HTTP server host, and then I concatenated on the slash in the category, and then the slash in the product. But actually, this did nothing because all this was doing was um, it was you know doing this header function and redirecting there. 
but it, you know it was passing in the category and it was passing in the product but that doesn't change anything in the URL bar so by the URL I mean up here it doesn't add anything onto here and the way that we need to change that is um, using actual redirect like window lo window dot location in JavaScript um, so just comment this out for now um, this doesn't help and then basically down here um, well our route is the same basically except we have slash shop here instead of slash store um, everything else in it is the same and then I need to do the same um, if check um, basically this is exactly the thing I was talking about up here and then we return the array and that's all the same too um, but where it gets different is inside the view um, for the shop action so let's just go over to that and um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do our JavaScript check so um, if you want to put some script inside your um, twig view you have to put it inside these blocks so I have um, block of JavaScript here this doesn't have to be JavaScript you could name this something else but we have a script block that's starting here and it's ending here now inside that I have my script tags and then inside of that we have an immediately invoked function expression and the reason why I wrap all of this you know code right here um, inside a function expression is so that um, these variables we're creating here won't be global variables um, so if we if we didn't have this you know function here and here even though we use the var keyword you know that's still going to uh, create properties on the window object and we're going to get global variables and the first thing we're doing is we're just setting up the options for this script right here so right now um, we're using you know slash shop right here so the first thing I did was um, page category is set to shop and if this changed in the future then all a developer would need to do is just change this um, this shop bit right here okay um, the URL is set to the document URL the document URL is going to be everything that's in here um, once it reaches this script. And the next thing we're doing is creating a variable route position. And route position is the URL index of page category. So basically what it's doing is it's looking through um, this whole URL and it's looking for shop. And then when it finds shop, it's going to return its index. So, um, you know, this could be like 25 or 30. Um, I'm not going to count from the beginning, but it's going to find the index in the string right there. Now, once we have that, we create a variable route segments, and route segments is set to um, the URL dot substring, and then we give it the route position, so where shop started uh, started from, and then URL dot length, which is going to be the end of that string. So we're just taking out. Um, a substring here so shop is here so basically what we're doing now is we're grabbing this part right here okay now once we have that we create a variable slash count and slash count is set to um, route segments and then we are splitting it um, wherever we find a slash and then here um, dot length minus one so basically what this is doing is um, if we go to the browser here right now we have um, this bit of text right here and then we're going to split this into an array wherever we find a slash and so for example if the URL was like this if the you know window location was like this after shop um, it's going to split it here and it's going to split it here and um, yeah we're going to be able to um, this is how we're going to be able to count these slashes in it so I was able to count the slashes with um, with this uh, bit of script right here and then what we need to do is we need to uh, do a check if the slash count is not equal to 2 and if you don't um, put it in this if statement right here um, you're going to get an infinite loop of redirecting so if the slash count is not equal to 2 then we know we need to do a redirect and we go into our redirect right here and then URL is set to HTTP and then here we're concatenating on some PHP so um, you know this twig stuff right here um, this is actually just PHP and it's going to be um, it's going to be rendered into PHP so this is how we can get um, the domain basically so in my case it's going to be localhost and you could also just use JavaScript to do this instead but I thought I'd you know show you the twig way um, you know just so we can see some uh, 
you know, some twig variables here. So anyways, um, HTTP localhost slash project symphony and all this stuff slash shop. And then here um, we're putting some more PHP into our URL. So we have the category and then slash and then product. And then we end the string right there. And then finally we set um, window location to the URL we just created right here. And you know the next time it goes around um, slash count is going to be equal to 2 and then it's not going to run this block and then we're going to you know be able to display this HTML here um, welcome to the redirecting shop. So I think we can just go over to the browser and just do a few tests with this. So first I'm just going to go to slash shop and you'll see that um, we get the default category of books and then default product of JavaScript book and then we could do um, we could do anything else we could do uh, furniture okay so category is furniture and then we show the default furniture product but if they did pass in like a type of furniture like a chair well now they get the chair page 